I'm Lara, a monitor of this conference. The theme of this conference is that of Mongolian mythology. Uh, the keynote speaker is the Dr. Darko Babik. Sorry, wait. When? Uh, keynote speaker is the Darko, Dr. Darko Babik. Uh, he is a professor in the University of Zagreb, Faculty of Humanities and Social Sciences, for, former chair of ICTOP and ICOM. Um, welcome to speak, speech, you. Are you the Darko Babik? Yeah, I'm present. Uh, who will share? Will I share my presentation or you will do it? Yeah, but it will be good if you share it. Okay, okay, okay. Is it okay? Yes, it works. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, just to start with uh, the today's session, I will not, of course, go into the details which my uh, the the title is suggesting. Uh, I will not go go deep into details about the Mo Mongolian situation, but I will just kick off the let's say kick off the session uh, in sense of uh, speaking about a little bit speaking about in in short time speaking about competencies of museum professionals today uh, or some ideas of the competencies of museum professionals today in that sense uh shortly about me uh just coming from the uh, uh as nara said uh, University of Zagreb, the capital of Croatia in Europe, uh, as associate professor and chair of some department of museology and heritage management. So, what is my point, or some of my points? The if we do any kind of the work, and if you want to do it properly, we know, we, we need to know what we want to gain as well as what kind of the path we want or could take to reach the uh, dressing point, or better to say, to be efficient in, in any situation which is demanded today, or it will be even more in the future, we must be aware of as many as possible good practices, as well as those which are not necessary on the same way, so in a sense, different kind of the practices as well as their theoretical background to follow those which are good and to avoid those which are not so successful uh, in, in that sense. In other words, uh, we need to learn to do any work properly or better to say, we need to be trained and educated where any kind of museum heritage work is not so different compared to any other situation or any other position or any other work compared to uh, which exists in a, in a, in a, in a, in a sense of the, of the, of the of the of the any other position in a, in existing today, and of course, as we know, it is complex and demanding test a task, uh, museum or heritage related work. In that sense, of course, uh, defining of professional training is something which is very connected with what we are saying, and we could say in that sense that museum is a complex organism with a responsibility to perform a diverse set of tasks and services to fulfill its societal roles. And within the museum field, professional training is internal as well as external to the museum where we are working. It is provided that professional training is provided as initial training by 
usually by university degrees in museum studies on her or heritage management or conservation or art curatorship or any others specialized uh, areas where developing skills and competences connected with future museum work is connected uh, but it always continues well people begin and develop their their own careers professional training is an always again ongoing process and can be provide, provided in-house meaning in museum and also by additional training managed by museum association agency governmental organization consultants and so on and so on just short illustration of different kind of here the, those connected with a uh, ICOM international training for professionals, uh, museum professionals on the top uh, right side in Croatia, on the top left side in Iran, on the downside of the image that yeah, reading organized in uh, Borneo, Malaysia in, in 2000, 2018. So thinking about uh, the, the idea or in the, this short time I have available to explain some ideas. Museum, or better to say, because museum are, uh, of course, dealing with heritage, heritage experts must act as kind of mediators in a process of bringing source and yours, users, so consumers, the, 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 the visitors, close together, which could be seen as one of definition of heritage interpretation. Thinking about uh, in some kind of the scheme uh, uh, in one slide about the museum, museum and heritage uh, future, we could say, and museum and heritage professionals in the future, we could say that competencies will be indeed important where some kind of the soft skills will be very relevant and from from our point from my point of view import importance of adapt adaptability importance of teamwork and importance of critical thinking and problem solving within short set of competences will be uh, very very strong and very very important the second one, C or C, will be collection and care. And the last one, in that sense, in the future, will be more and more uh, taking care of or taking about community, about communication, and about collaboration. So when I'm showing this slide and speaking a little bit about that, some Professionals are saying, okay, that's nice, that's good, that's fine. But what about the conservation, which is the, the main part of it? And my usual reply in that sense is that the, the wording of the director of uh, National Park Service from 1953, so almost 70 or exactly 70 years now old, who is saying through interpretation, we can reach understanding. Through understanding, we could reach appreciation. <laughs> and through appreciation, we could reach protection, which is more or less something which today we will call active kind of conservation. So as far as people do understand, something is good, something is interesting for them, we will get the protection of that. And what, how we can reach that point is, of course, through the quality of heritage interpretation we are setting up. So I, as I'm saying here, interpretation is kind of the storytelling, storytelling conservation. Going back to that idea of mediators, uh, heritage experts as mediators in bringing source, and users close together, we could say that it is good goal 
but with the objective to develop skills in, in any individual or community which will encourage and ensure their full understanding of heritage, including its creation, so creation of heritage, where the ideal is literacy in a state in which they, people, would competently interpret and manage their own heritage, thus contribu contributing to the creation of a new additional values of the improvement of the quality of their life, and which is indeed very important according to their own preferences. So just short illustration of kind of the work we've done within the ICOM International Committee for the Training of Professionals in 2022, for the last year, co cooperating with colleagues from Italian uh, 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 Institute for Conservation uh, in, a, in a way of, in a, in a sense of young professional forum. We had kind of the, we had group of the young people, uh, all of them already professionals. And we with them start to develop different kind of activities, including what, including survey, what kind of extra skills they feel they need. And out of that uh, research, out of that survey, uh, soft skills, which young conservation, uh, for a most conservation people, those dealing with conservation uh, things, uh, uh, recognized as kind of the gap that they feel. You can see here on a slide, so on a uh, defined in yellow for the most, but they feel that communication skills, community engagement, interactive incl inclusion, uh, so making that museum more responsive to the ordinary needs of the public or addressing people with different kinds of the needs, leadership skills, making way of doing the decision, uh, teamwork or team building, digital learning skills, networking, collaboration, fundraising, or things connected with the fundraising and design skills are those which on a, are on the top of the list of the people, young people who actually starting their, their, their way of museum museum career as i said this is just one illustration in this short time of 10 minutes which i shared with you but idea is to give you again short short very short uh, uh, abstract i think this is the better the, the best word of <coughs> what we are doing within ICOM International Committee for the Training of Personal, as well as some ideas of the needs or uh, uh, museum professionals today, including for the most young museum professionals, as a start of the kickoff, uh, 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 as, as, a, as a kind of the kickoff uh, lecture, no matter it's called keynote, for a discussion following. So this is all from my side, and uh, I'm looking forward to listen to uh, uh, many of you uh, after me or later on to share my experience with you uh, in in within IPCOM or within the uh, direct communication over email or any other any other way. So thanks a lot. Thank you, thank you, Doctor Dakabavik. It's the mm -hmm. Great to hear you that capacity um, museologist is the basic theory for museologists that have to improve uh, conservation through interpretations. Uh, very interesting, thank you. So uh, next speech is uh, uh, presentation is this, the doctor. We are welcoming Muktaga, Muktaga Dolomja. She is the head Museum Training Meteorology Center at the National Museum of Mongolia. Her topic is uh, research to improve storage condition for, for textile artifacts in Mongolia, museum collection, 
in a case study of the National Museum of Mongolia. Uh, she defended this topic dissertation in 19, uh, 2019 for uh, PhD of uh, philosophy in uh, uh, Mongolia National University of Arts and Culture. Welcome. Hello, everybody. Thank you for presenting me, Ignaram. Uh, and my research topic is the research to improve the storage conditions for textile artifacts in Mongolian museum collections. A case study at the National Museum of Mongolia. Could you see their slide, Mike? Mm -hmm. It will be good if you make bigger screen. Yeah, yeah, okay. 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 This study is my PhD degrees study. And this research theoretical basis. Museology consists of two parts, theory and practice. The theoretical part comprises the following section. The general theory, the communication theory, the theory, and communication. The practice part comprises three sections. Amongst them, this research has been conducted based on the Tesaro theory, material science, and conservation theories. Researcher Geoffrey Lewis concepts the theory of valuables or Tesaro is the research of identifying museum collection, discovering their value, importance, and information, and ensuring their preservation. This theory will become the theoretical basis of this research, valuation, exhibition, and restoration activity. Russian researcher Oganesova's theory the theory of Tesaro's mm -hmm. includes research related. Related to preservation of artifacts by forming a specific mode of preservation. And researcher Razgon's concepts the study of physiology is the framework of real regularities related to the process of accumulating and preserving knowledge and social information through museum objects. And researcher Agnes Timar Baladi and Dina Eastops. Concepts understanding the material structure, purpose related information, and significance of artifacts is an integral part of conservation. Uh, Italian researcher Giovanni Urbanis, the concept of diagnosis and research will guide all future activities, which has not lost its importance even today. The research goal to develop a scientific framework and foundation for categorizing textile items to research their current storage conditions and to improve storage conditions and facilities. Objectives, first, to apply the fundamental theories of textiles and textile conservation to research and categorize textile objects in the National Museum of Mongolia, Mongolia's collection, second, to research the origins, raw materials, properties, manufacturing techniques, and unique features of textile items, as well as their physical and chemical composition. Third, to research, determine, and evaluate the external and internal factors that affect the condition of textiles at the National Museum of Mongolia's collection. And following that, in this slide showing the research methodology, the methods used in this research include widely used methods such as analysis, synthesis, induction, deduction, laboratory testing, modeling, and other methods, such as natural science research in tandem with materials, identification methods used in museum studies. For example, social science, cultural study, museology, history, and Natural science, material study, technical science, conservation, and mathematical statistics. In this slide showing the diversification 
of textile artifacts of the National Museum through numbers and percentage. The first to be selected and categorized textile objects from the National Museum of Mongolia's collections. The textile object represented 10% of the entire collection. This includes textile objects in a storage rooms, objects displayed in the exhibition hall and the broad and international exhibitions. Currently, the National Museum have, has 13 storage rooms. There are two graphs showing the percentage of all textile items at the National Museum of Mongolia. Other one is percentage of the entire collection. Next slide showing diversification of textile artifacts, raw materials at the National Museum, Mongolia. Within all textile objects of the museum, there are 33 types of materials of which silk holds the majority at 25%. Therefore, as the main object of research being that studied in physical and chemical properties, as well as origins and the characteristic of silk. The percentage amount of the diversification of raw materials of textile artifacts at the National Museum of Mongolia that graphs showing. In this graphs showing diversification of the uses and dimensions of textile artifacts. When diversifying according to the characteristics of use, the majority at 30% are flags, then hats, tails, and shoes. Of all textile artifacts, 66% of 1,892 pieces are two-dimensional, other is the three-dimensional. In this slide showing diversification, consolidation of textile uses and dimensions. Material study. This is slide showing the characteristic of museum textiles. In order to determine the features and characteristics of any material, it is necessary to study its raw form. For example, textile can be made from yarn, and yarn is made up of fiber. There are two form of, forms of silk, silk classified as the natural silk and artificial silk, which is obtained through chemical processing. This is the shape of silk as seen through a microscope, like this. Form D is silk. In this research, the properties and the differences between the fibers of pure and artificial silk is clarified after which its preservation mode is clarified. There are three pictures showing the steel fiber and artificial silk, external and cross section and longitudinal shape. Two objects made from poor silk and artificial silk fibers have been selected from textile collection of the National Museum of Mongolia. One is the Dandudulun Kristel, other one is Sambus Kappa. The textile structure, free fibers, origins, raw materials are studied with the light microscope according to the international standard method of AATCC TM 2220. 13, fiber analysis quality of American Association of Textile Chemists and Colorists for identification and analysis of storage conditions. This is like the case study, some cut back, front and back side, and also inside the registration form. This research to clarify to cause of damage of the objects and the origin of raw materials. Material analysis, fiber identification by microscope, preliminary observation of longitudinal morphology suggests the bag is made from viscose rayon, not silk as recorded in the museum records. Man-made fiber derived from cellulose, from cotton trees, and other plants. Very vulnerable to deterioration, deterioration from light these two pictures showing National Museum of Mongolia's micrograph 
showing longitudinal fiber section from the cap bags after fabric, fabric layer. Uh, next is a reference image showing longitudinal and cross-sectional micrograph of viscose rayon mainly fiber chemically, re chemically regenerated from natural cellulose. Next slide showing comparative characteristics of poor silk and artificial silk. Poor silk and artificial silk had very different properties and characteristics from one another, thus necessitating different storage conditions. For example, in here, the poor silk standard condition for proper storage environment are 11 to 45% humidity. Uh, artificial silk is a standard storage conditions are 60 to 65% humidity. So differences there are. Next slide showing interrelationship in external and internal factors affecting museum collections, hazards and factors agents effects. In here, the six layers around the museum artifacts. The International Center for the Study of the Preservation and Restoration of Cultural Property and the Canadian Conservation Institute have defined the conservation framework of museum exhibits and artifacts as having six layers. Each of these layers is not only a barrier of control and protection, but also a knowledge structure that may pose a risk. And according to this map, it is necessary to create a layer of preservation and protection of cultural heritage. This is slide showing the factors effect in the textile collection of National Museum of Mongolia. In the last 10 years, the factors effect in the collection of the National Museum of Mongolia and the correction between each of the 10 agents of deterioration that have a negative effect on the exhibits determined as the following. The yellow part represented the depends from the agents. In this graph showing average temperature of storage room inside and outside of the building degrees in Celsius monthly 2060 to 2018. Whether the temperature and relative humidity of the National Museum of Mongolia meets the standards of the Mongolian Museum standards, whether there is a correlation between the temperature and humidity inside and outside the museum, and the numerical parameters measured in the last three years were stati statistically evaluated. The blue line showing the outside temperature and two red straight lines showing the standard level, minimum and maximum. Sure. This is slide showing numerical indicators of temperature. The hottest room is hall seven, and the temperature is nine Celsius higher than the standard reaching a maximum in July at 27 Celsius. This graph showing average relative of storage inside and outside of the building percentage monthly 26 to 80. And also two red straight lines showing the standard minimum and maximum. Other is the storage room and exhibition halls line. This slide is numerical indicators of relativity. <laughs> the processing results show that the room with the most dry condition is storage room one, with a relative humidity <clears> of <throat> 37% less than the standard minimum value, or in winter, 13%, and 58% in summer. There, there also has a very high fluctuation level of 14%. This graph showing regression line and sample tool value. Considering the correlation content, it can be seen that the temperature of the room has a strong positive correlation of 
76 and 78, 94%, 94% for rooms, storage rooms 10, exhibition hall 3, 7, 8, taking into, into account the temperature outside. A selection of 35 textile including national treasures and unique objects of the National Museum of Mongolia were analyzed to determine the characteristics of the material as well as the kind, density, and type of raw materials. There are two pictures showing the during the research and some examples of textiles of National Museum of Mongolia, for example, silk with jacquard patterning. Uh, other one is pattern sealed on silk. Next slide showing the result of the study which determined the, the type, density, breed, number, and the regions of the selected silk objects in the sample. As a result of the analysis, it was determined that three textiles were made of silk and 12 textiles were incorrectly identified. In Mongolia, the factors affecting silk textiles damage were following sequence, pollution, lighting, temperature, and relative humidity. This is a slide showing damage types of silk textile restoring. 2060 to 2080 by the state and local museums. Selecting the, and analyzing the reports of all Mongolian museums restored silk textiles at the National Center for Cultural Heritage in 2060 to 2080 revealed that of the 27 objects, 19 objects were ethnographic and eight were religious objects. Damages, dusty and dirty 20. Six textiles, torn and ripped, frayed, 23 textiles, deformed and shriveled, free, discolored, free, watermarked, one object. Uh, this graph showing of all damages, 96% comprised dusty and dirty. Uh, other graphs are showing is damage categories percentage of restored silk textile, National Museum of Mongolia, 2062, 2018. In this slide, methods to create a proper storage environment for silk textile artifacts. Simple methodological recommendation to ensure the appropriate environmental condition for the storage of textile items in museum collections. The conclusion, the type structure, origin physical and chemical characteristic, current condition of the storage analysis and the research of raw materials and materials of the museum textiles are textile artifacts carried out within the scope of this research will serve a scientific basis for improving the preservation of textile artifacts. By ensuring that it will be possible to create a diversified collection Diversified collection of artifacts based on their materials and provide the storage environment suitable for their characteristics and features. This wouldn't only clarify storage methodologies, but in turn ensure all collections are kept in a uniform and orderly fashion. Thank you for attention. Thank you, Dr. Muktara. It's the very useful uh, research for the storage condition at the National Museum of Mongolia. Thank you. Uh, now it's going to next this um, presentation. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. uh, now I'm currently works on the Qatar National Museum. So in here is the lunch time uh, in this case i leave this conference sorry for that i hope you understand it in mm -hmm. here have Absolutely. so many words Welcome sorry to how is weather in qatar 
I'm so glad for participating. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for commenting. Bye. Enjoy your life. Good luck. Good luck. Okay. Uh, next next presentation is that we are welcoming Dr. Mendes Chambaldor. She is the head collection department of the Mongolia National History Museum. And uh, she defended her uh, dissertation uh, PhD program in 2019. Uh, the, the topic is the analysis of collection of the Mongolia provincial museums. Welcome to speech. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Nara. Can you can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. It's and can good. you see my slide? Yes. Everything okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Hello. Good evening, uh, all. But uh, in uh, correct, I don't know now. Uh, morning, right? Good morning, good, good evening. Good morning and good, good afternoon and good I evening. Okay. Correct. Yeah, okay. Yes. Okay. First of all, I would like to express my uh, sincere gratitude of, uh, to the Mongolian National Committee of the International Council of Museums for organizing uh, today's very inter interesting and very important online conference and giving us the opportunity to bring our research work to your attention and to the attention of such a big audience. In the 15 minutes, uh, I will uh, present uh, the main part and finding result of my thesis uh, analysis of the collection composition of Mongolian provincial museums of my PhD, which I did in 2019, uh, 2019 at the University of Culture and Arts of Mongolia under the following contest. They are introduction and materials and methodology, note of research and result and conclusion. As a background, uh, I let, uh, let me give you a brief information about the Museums of Mongolia. Next year in uh, 2024, Mongolia is going to celebrate its 100th anniversary since the first ever official organized museum was established. Uh, as of today, 11 state owned and uh, 24 locally owned, uh, all total 45 museums are operating in Mongolia. The number of the private owned museums and galleries has been increasing in recent years. The government of Mongolia has paid great attention to the development of the museums. For the uh, last few years, uh, for example, the Chinggisang uh, Chinggisang National Museum uh, was uh, newly established in providing its uh, service to the public since October 2022, and also the construction of the new building for the. Uh, my museum, uh, Natural History Museum, uh, starts uh, this year and be completed, we hope, in uh, completed uh, in 2027. As for provinces uh, in South Gobi, Amak, in 2022, a new museum building was built uh, and the museum has been serving the public. Also, a uh, new building for museum uh, uh, museum uh, will be uh, commissioned this year in Henti uh, and Urhanga and Kovskol, Dornko and uh, Dornot Amex. The largest administrative unit of uh, geographic and demographic uh, distribution in Mongolia is called the AMAC. IMAC Museum is the scientific and cognitive institution providing comprehensive knowledge about the region's uh, troposphere, wildlife, people's history, and various cultural heritage and education that cannot be uh, duplicated anywhere else. A museum was created, established in the era of socialism by its concept. And during that period, the attitude towards uh, the use uh, of traditional cultural heritage, customs, and the rituals uh, 
uh, inherited from past historical development and influenced. Half of the quantity of artifacts uh, collected during the historical development uh, considered uh, sufficient. Uh, there was a need for qualitative analysis of whether the composition competences, expression, representation, and interpretation of the collection has a scientific ground. Within the scope of my research with the aim of studying the types and the relationship of collections categories, the registration, documentation, valuation, and the level of integrity of cultural heritage, the collections of archaeological, uh, collections of archaeological and the ethnic cultural heritage and intellectual cultural heritage composition in the uh, 21 IMEX Museum were analyzed. Uh, in doing uh, so, we have used the method of uh, quantitative analysis uh, of scientific research, uh, comparison, uh, aligning. Uh, modeling as well as thesaurus theory and methodology used in museum studies. Uh, methodology of classification of special feature of, of artifacts is uh, thesaurus, uh, thesaurus uh, theory and methodology used in parallel with the system methodology. Complex system of uh, museum input uh, and output preservation, research, uh, communication, relationship, and uh, heritage study. As a result of research work, uh, the following innovative conclusions were uh, found regarding uh, the types internal classification, uh, registration, and documentation and evaluation of collection composition in Mongolia's 21 IMX museums. For example, uh, respected conclusions uh, uh, regarding the types of collection comp uh, components in the IMX museum and found and the current relationship between them. And also conclusion uh, about the scientific, uh, scientific grounds for the internal classification uh, registration and documentation of the type of uh, museum collection. And also conclusions related to establishment of uh, uh, research system uh, for valuing uh, the collection in the museum found in accordance with the, the theory and methodology of teachers that were met. In 2014, the government of Mongolia approved the law, uh, law on the protection of cultural heritage. According to uh, this law, Mongolia organizes state inventory uh, of mobile heritage and intangible historical and cultural artifacts monuments once uh, every four years. In our study, we have used the 2012-2013 census uh, data. The analysis showed that, uh, showed that, showed that out of uh, 85,794 collections of uh, 21 IMEC uh, data use. The composition of museum fund collections and uh, the classification of artifacts can be different to the future of the culture, living economy, and lifestyle of a certain nations. It seems uh, that the countries have chosen the forms of classification suitable for their museum collection. The collection of museum funds by its material and content is categorized into six main categories, such as a uh, historical and uh, ethnographical, ethnographical and uh, re religious and art and natural history and archaeological uh, uh, collections. From uh, these uh, five uh, types of collections, we use the uh, ethnographical and religious and uh, archaeological collections in my uh, thesis. 
So uh, it is not possible uh, to present all of uh, the main research to the following slides. Uh, uh, following uh, slides, I will present some examples along with uh, uh, my general conclusions. As uh, for the collection of archaeological monuments, uh, monuments, uh, Stone Age, uh, uh, Stone Age monuments, weapons and household items, uh, and objects of ancient uh, settlement and sto uh, stone artifacts and uh, religious and ritual items and clothing. Uh, the types of archaeological cultural heritage in the collection of the Provincial Museum are not complex, uh, consisting of many separate items. There, are, uh, is, uh, there is already the uh, need to create a system that cultural artifacts uh, and uh, monuments found through the historical and archaeological research conducted in IMAC territory can be used for academic analytics and research purposes. Uh, this section discusses uh, the composition of artifacts related to Mongols, homes, shelters, and household furniture, utensils, clothing, ornaments, and accessories, uh, as well as artifacts of household farming. As a country uh, with a nomadic culture adapting to the unique features of nature and climate, Mongolians have uh, been engaged in pastoral husbandry. Uh, therefore, uh, the collection consists mainly of artifacts related to the traditional home shelter and farming culture of nomads. Uh, I chose the, uh, this uh, slide only two uh, interesting examples are traditional home shelter culture nam of nomads and traditional farming culture of uh, nomads. So uh, traditional home shelter uh, culture of nomads and farming culture of nomads. There are, uh, the research showed that the uh, collections with ethnic groups uh, Heuristics need more attention. Also, there is a lack of records in accordance with scientific theory and methodology for modeling ethnography. So uh, it is believed that the research based on the tissue theory and methodology of uh, uh, museology is uh, very limited. For the funds of the Provincial Museum uh, of Mongolia, discovering them, hiding grandeur value behind this type of collection, intellectual, uh, cultural heritage uh, collection, and passing it down to the next generation is of vital importance for the heritology and, <clears throat> sorry, memory of any historical group of people. In this context, uh, the study discussed the composition of artifacts related to folk, craft culture, Mongolian toys, traditional literary culture, musical instruments, and religions. Uh, here it introduces, introduces I only found uh, it's uh, <clears throat> Mongolian traditional uh, games because uh, Traditional game, uh, gaming is inspirably bonded to Mongolians' uh, irritably intellectual, brief, and their way of living in harmony with nature and significant to develop and thinking skills. In addition, uh, these games create a sociable and friendly atmosphere and good for health because uh, there are heartland games that are played alone. Uh, there are four games, uh, finger games and bar games, uh, games with rocks, ankle bones games, and various puzzle games. As a result, uh, it ca can be seen that the heritage tissues in the Mongolian Provincial Museum is related to ethnic intellectual culture, 
are very different in terms of the composition of the collection and have not been formed using a clear unfit policy and methodology. Uh, it uh, seems that the collections are often not comprehensive, but a, a, a representation of a certain type of uh, heritology only. Uh, it is not possible to present uh, full work with three chapters and 12 subchapters in a such short time. So I have brought the uh, brief ideas to you. Thank you for your attention. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you very much. Interesting presentation, Mendes. Uh, new glimpse for terrorism. Mongolia and Mozoology. Thank you. The next speech we are welcoming Dr. Sally Waterson. She is manager for the NSW New South Wales Government Australia. Uh, she is a golden volunteer in Mongolia from Australia in 2000. I, I remember her the educational program, uh, what she, she uh, implemented in Mongolia like yesterday. We are very glad to see you in here. Uh, also, she uh, defended her dissertation uh, by Mongola Museology. Her topic is Jing Mongol, through Mongolia and Mongola Museums and the construction of national identity. Welcome, Sally Watson. We are glad to hear you here. Thank you, Hank and It's wonderful to be here and I'm I'm trying to be professional, but it's so nice to see lots of Mongolian people that I just feel like I want to talk to everyone. Um, but, and I'm a little bit different. Um, excuse me, I, I thank you for inviting me to IBECOM Mongolia and ICOM Mongolia and um, I've come international. It's wonderful to meet some new, new colleagues who are all interested in museology and Mongolia and to Dr. Mohammed. Um, for his um, presence and insight and to Dr. Buma, um, chair of the Mongolia International Committee. It's very much an honor to be here. Um, and my fellow presenters who are eminently more qualified in Mongol museology than I could ever be. Um, and it's wonderful to hear what work's been going on since I was there. It's really interesting. And I'd like to talk to you all to get myself Dated on on what's happening. I don't have slides as such because I haven't been to Mongolia since I think so maybe ten years. Yes. So I last have no time. images that last would time. be more current than what you have. <laughs> maybe more actually. My daughter was six months old when I last went there. So, um, but I, I just thought I thought rather than telling you too much about my PhD. I'd reflect on how it came to pass because um, I think it speaks a lot about the, the progress of Mongolian museology since I've known you. Um, so I first, um, I first began looking at my PhD when I, um, after I'd held the position of, I think I was called capacity builder at the National Museum of Mongolian History at the time, um, we did some quite, we worked very fast and very hard. And I think that's why people remember me because I just wanted to make things happen. And um, so it, it, we all worked very hard and very fast and it was quite a chaotic time, but um, we, we eventually produced a really robust open democratic education program for secondary school students, which included printed material, which all of the curators were involved in, uh, photographs, um, uh, education programs for teachers to assist them to engage with open and democratic history. Um, and it was, a, it was a really exciting time. Um, it was a product, I should say, of funding from the Australian government and, and the Canadian government was wonderful as well um, through their foreign affairs department. And what it culminated in for me was that we took 
the materials, the new idea of open learning, interactive learning um, to several IMAGs. And also obviously it was, it was intent, it was in, it was adopted by the National Museum of Mongolia and then other museums started to connect with National Museum staff and say, could we do that too? Can you help us with that? So it sort of, it spread from my perspective, what I quit, feel is quite quickly. Um, and what I've heard since um, has resulted in not the museological practices that the other speakers have been talking about today, which is conservation, you know, temperature control, training, et cetera. But this, this our, our work, which involved all of the museum staff pretty much um, was really around educating people in an interactive way as opposed to just telling them what they should know um, and and doing it. Um, the reason I undertook my PhD, which was completed in 2014, was that the then director of the museum, Dr. Sondin Ichnarov, was um, passionate about making his museum the best possible educational institution that it could be. And my impression was that there was no money. Um, there had been no, not enough money for quite some time. So it was a very difficult task to not only keep the museum open and, and try to improve the conservation and try to improve the library, um, but he was really interested in getting international attention to basically garner more funding to make the museum have the capacity to be better. And so one day I said to him, what, what do you think I can do when I finish my post as a capacity builder in Mongolia? And he said, just get people interested. So I came back to Australia and um, decided I'd do a PhD, which would be a document that the museum could use. Um, so um, that PhD was basically my focus, which is not the focus of museology as such, but my focus was on having watched all of these international people in the museum, bringing money, borrowing objects, me having education ideas. I watched as the Mongol staff um, managed to keep their own identity and their own professional museology ideas while absorbing as much as they could from other influences. And I really, I really admired that. Um, but what I found when I started my PhD was that as an English speaker, there's a, a great body of work about museology and socialism. There's a great body of work about museology and identity building, particularly for national museums or museums about difficult heritage. Um, there was a good amount of work available to me about the history of Mongolian museums, but all of that had never been put in a tidy place. And so um, I thought with my PhD, um, it, was, it was important to put all of these Mongolian sources and Russian sources, what, whatever was in English, um, to speak to curators such as yourselves and um, museum directors and historians to try to place, to try to create a body of work about the history of Mongolian museums, about how socialism influenced collecting. And at that point, which was 2002, I think 2003, how museum professionals were um, respecting the past, conserving the collections, still collecting and collecting a lot in terms of archaeological activity, particularly how they were managing all of these different museological um, disciplines with not a lot of resources and um, a very changing Mongolia. So um, my my PhD, in terms of the, the, the theory, um, 
I sort of I, I concluded that museologists understand that museums are places of contestation and debate, mm -hmm. um, and that museums can influence, but they're also very influenced by politics, money, other ideas, um, and that museums and museum methodology is. Um, It's, it's, an, it's a collection of influences such as cultures, politics, minority and majority voices. And then chance. There was many times at the National Museum of Mongolia where something happened that contributed to our ability to make an education program that was really the result of a chance. It wasn't our deliberate trying. Um, um, but I think we understand that in terms of curatorial methodology, um, the messages that, that curators transmit, no matter how much they know about museum methodology or their political context, um, nothing's ever interpreted by the audience as purely what the curator has intended. Um, what I also was really interested, one of the biggest surprises to me in studying as much literature I can was that a lot of Russian literature described that museums and museum methodology arrived with socialism in Mongolia. And what became... <laughs> That's okay, I'll, I'll just talk louder. Um, what became quite clear in looking at the history of Mongolia that Mongols have had an incredible history of caring for significant objects and collections for a lot longer than socialism. And I think that was probably something that Mongolian people have always known in their spiritual and cultural life. But I had, I, I was pleased as a Westerner to connect that there were places like Sanshand and the Bogtan Palace Museum, all of the religious collections that actually had been collected, curated, conserved in pretty much a religious way, but also a museological way. So the socialist literature about museums being new was not that new. And I found that really um, powerful in the context of Mongolians, people caring for their physical cultural heritage. So to hear um, everyone today talking about silks and temperature and humidity control, that's not all modern. Um, caring for historical objects has been so much a part of Mongol culture um, for, forever, basically. I think they were the main points because I didn't want to talk too much about the part of my thesis that's about nationalism and the, the, the utilisation of of objects to create national identity because I haven't been to Mongolia lately enough to see how that's happening. But I'd like to conclude um, by, by um, and again, this is, isn't going to add to your technical knowledge of museology, but I think as an outsider, um, when I first observed museum professionals and worked with museum professionals in you know a very basic office we all had a pencil and a pen and the computers were the big ones that were like a big block of plastic and um and um i i feel that um the dedication at that time to improvement of um the improvement of the background to the exhibitions and to the conservation and to the preservation the collection. It was absolutely dedication, even though there were so few resources at the time. Um, and I know how disappointed I often was that I couldn't assist to provide material and educational materials and um, academic materials that would have assisted at the time, but um, I can see from today and over the years that um, that dedication to improving theory and practice is just 
getting stronger and stronger, um, in, including that balance between joining up with international museum methodology, but also preserving um, Mongolian traditional aspects of caring and keeping. I, I find that really quite amazing. Um, and um, the, well, everyone's spoken English today. And when I first met most of you, we spoke in sign language because I didn't speak Mongol and you guys were, you know, learning and, um, and I wasn't learning because I was just trying to make everyone work so fast to make, to make a product that we, we didn't, we would just worked really hard. But um, I, I would say that Mongolian museology with some, you know, obviously there's a range of publications that are quite regular now. Um, the, the new museums and the revision of museums in Mongolia with clear academic underpinning theory is so strong. Um, and the, um, the uh, amount of time that so many of you have been uh, investigating your theses, doing theses, dissertations, doing the really basic scientific work like how hot room seven is and what that means to silk and, and synthetic silk. Um, I, I, I just really admire that. And I feel um, that I probably, personally, I probably need to come back and update my PhD so that it could be more useful to you all. Um, but I, I feel that um, all aspects of museology, just even from hearing from you all today, have been um, incredibly dedicatedly worked on for, for decades, and it's a credit. So I'd say I would cut off now because I know we're over time. Um, I'd say thank you. It's so lovely to hear from you all. I'd love to put my um, email address in the chat and potentially connect with you on more technical details or with more historical detail. Um, um, and I, I appreciate being invited. Thank you very much. Mute. Marat. Can, can we unmute oh, thank you. Yeah. Thank yeah. you very much, Sajid Watterson. You were interesting speech uh, you, uh, of your dissertation and last year we received your full dissertation by academic um, papers it's uh, you must read uh, her dissertation uh, it's there here about the how uh, how mongolians built national identity by museums it's very interesting that time was we, we were the very young we didn't know even we didn't know how we are building national identity by museum collection. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. Also, I uh, very well remember the live his live history educational program. Emit too, Emit too. Thank you. Yes, exactly. You as a part from Australia. Thank you again. Okay, I'm honored to be here. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, next presentation is that we are going to welcome Dr. Yanjo Evermin. Uh, she is the head of the Mythology Department of the Mongolian Theatre Museum. Uh, her the dissertation's topic is the way to establish appreciate, appreciate environment for the storage of the museum collection in Mongolia. She defended in 1914 one of first museologists in Mongolia with uh, Sally Witterson. Welcome, Yenjo. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Good afternoon and good evening, all of you. Can you see my yes, it's work. screen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. OK. Yes. Um, and sorry. Is that... It's the last page. You can move the. To the first okay. Page. New share. Yeah. Um, is it okay? You can start okay. from the root page. I think it's the you are the last page of your presentation. Okay. Yeah. Yes. 
Yeah, thank you. Sorry, all of a sudden. Here is. Hmm? Okay, okay. Is there? Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay, okay. Okay. Um, again, good afternoon and good evening. Uh, I have re I had received as a doctor degree uh, almost the ten years ago, and also in today's my uh, uh, speech is the first of the in English, and, and uh, I use the. Only is the first Zoom meeting, so is there sorry uh, a lot of technical uh, problem. And my uh, this is a theme is way to establish it uh, appropriate environment for the uh, history of the museum collection in Mongolia. And um, here is uh, mentioned all our statistic. Uh, uh, in uh, almost an 11 years ago is a statistic. So um, after last 10 years uh, in Mongolia, uh, all, everything is changed. And today I think is uh, uh, especially museum field is uh, we are uh, all uh, a lot of new, uh, we have a lot of new uh, museums and uh, we have all of the uh, professionals uh, get gain um, from other uh, high development country. So is uh, museum staffs uh, uh, get uh, the more, more the better. And so I'm glad. Cultural heritage finds it and it is that as time passes by, a cotton to only blazing symbol, however, it's a creature during virus historical conditions. Historical way of storage of cultural heritage depends on development future of the country, lifestyle of people, custom and religion. Uh, specific nomadic civilization was established by Mongolian people during a long historical development way and cultural heritage which suits it to it was created. Cultural heritage is a, a major part to perform social role of the museum to deliver valuable information regarding Mongolian history and and culture to present and next generation through the museum. Therefore, appreciate history, storage and protection of the museum collection has been as one of the major goal in the society. And main activity of the museum can be determined by uh, research work, conservation of collection, activity of the collection, inventory of and their collection, and also as educational activity, other uh, social so, uh, marketing, ma management, and uh, sociology of museum and others, others uh, valuable works. I think uh, we are in Mongolian museums. Uh, 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 10, uh, last 20 years, we are focusing on hu um, human uh, and also educational activity. Before, in, uh, and from the 1924 uh, to uh, 1980s, uh, we are focusing only museum objects collecting and researching. Uh, from uh, above mentioned things, topics regarding the establishment of uh, an uh, proper environment for the storage of the museum collection was chosen 
by me. I am studying not wide range of issues regarding storage and protection of museum collection, but issues regarding storage of museum collection and determination of the way to establish a proper environment for the storage of museum collection, as well as to formulate the standard and methodological guidance. Here I uh, share a pie in 2012, since the establishment of the museum, first modern museum in Mongolia in 1924. Uh, we have totally 2,000. 200,512 unit objects, including uh, 48 museum had been running permanent activity. Uh, here I mentioned uh, in, in uh, 1924, we established modern, modern, modern museum. Uh, before in um, 18, uh, 18 to, uh, 52, in our uh, Dorngov province established uh, first Mongolian museum. So we have uh, a long no uh, experience of uh, handing uh, exhibits, no, objects. It had been uh, a vital recommend of to formulate methodological guidance to prepare to the preventive storage work and initial stage of conservation, which is suited to a prefecture of the country's social and economic condition with the scientific ground in accordance with international common standard and EU rule, as well as to ask certain the standard for the storage of the exhibit. In the research work, evaluation was performed to present the situation of storage environment for the exhibits in the museum, find through the method to study, find of museum studies and through the determination of factors which might influence in storage of museum, find through preventive storage method of conservation science. Mm, by uh, this research work, we had been drawn conclusion as follow, follows. The first, since in 1924, branches, types of fields of history, art, nature, and complexes museum, if classified, eight, uh, 85,000, 90 exhibits of 44, 24 uh, museums in the local area by the type historical, ethnographic, and religious objects take 7, 73% are artistic and fine arts exhibits take only 12% percent and exhibits of nature status take seven percent as seen from it policy of collection of museum fund is uh, failed in the province uh, museum museums uh, second as for the museum in Lambatar city 70 well, for percent of total collection is kept in storage room. Um, only 26 is exhibited in the uh, exhibition hall, uh, but uh, 31 of total museum, museums in local uh, provinces are kept in the uh, storage room and uh, 68 Percent is exhibited in the exhibition hall. It's uh, 
uh, two different state museum in Ulaanbaatar and uh, uh, province museums. Policy of the improvement of preventive storage work is held in 33 museums or uh, 72% as well as the feature of the advertising museum exhibits a contents with international standard. Third, sec 68.8% percent of total space of museum building is uh, exhibition room uh, halls. 13 percent is space for a storage room of collection. 1.8 is a space for public services. 15.4 percent is other spaces. It has provided the increase of distance of unit exhibits for square meter space, space, no availability of construction standard for uh, international museum, no su sufficient space for the storage space of the museum fund uh, collection between Mongolia. Studies were performed to fund the equipment for the show, safety, electricity, heat, and wet produce in collaboration with professional inspection organization. 80.5% uh, of 36 museums in the survey were evaluated lower than average. It is as as certain age as there was been a concept as a to act and transfer to transfer the exhibits in Mongolia after certain law, rule, and stand, standard for the museum activity of 24 countries. Above mentioned things has negative affection to storage museum of collection. In the result of my research work, we considered that it can be a formulated measurement index and instrument to measure humidity of exhibits and artifacts and ground to determine collection of public exhibits, initial cleaning procedure of collection, of wooden exhibits as well as can product damage, wool, uh, fungus, stain, fail, broken due to, to lack of humidity. In fact, I tried to a certain methods of international standard, including lighting, list for insect powder, exhibits and artifacts which can be used in our country to protect artifacts from air pollution in micro and macro level program to the protection of storage management and museum. Plan to move exhibits um, to a certain scientific ground and to formulate a risk uh, stimulation and a standard for the room and collector uh, storage room and museum building, which I was not studied well before. Ah, sorry. My computer is... Uh, Mm -hmm. Here, I, I just uh, take uh, uh, the pictures. That is the pictures uh, all of the 10 years ago. And uh, after uh, that uh, researcher, uh, all, everything is changed. You, uh, you see that is the exhibition hall. And uh, uh, here, uh, and here is the uh, old natural museum's uh, uh, exhibition hall. Now is a uh, uh, rebuilt new museum. Mm -hmm. Punisha. 
of standard fund of fabric and textile in the uh, Bogotan Palace Museum according to standard in collaboration with specialists of fabric storage and protection university utility in Vienna. Uh, can show important uh, importance of the practice research. Now, uh, here is uh, uh, all uh, you know, both hands uh, museum is a uh, public, uh, and uh, after that um, we uh, restore it, and all of things is uh, going better. It's the Significant to introduce uh, to Mongolian museum activity that uh, uh, improvement of environmental management, uh, which keeps uh, the heritage in order to improve the store storage of cultural heritage from the theory of the conservation as well as the storage of specialization from the aspects of material can be most appreciated the way, way we have low risk uh, of the damage. Introduction of a standard for the formulation uh, in the re result of research work shall play important role improve museum activity. Uh, impl implementation of proposed new idea and conclusion of, of the dissertation book work through practice will render certain contribution to the environment of storage of collection and heritage of the Museum Mongolia and May cultural heritage by the next generation. Uh, after uh, research work, um, we released a new uh, standard, um, uh, and then uh, all of things is uh, uh, going better. Uh, last uh, uh, two years ago, we have a, a new museum law. Mm -hmm. Thank you for attention. Here I um, uh, show you share you is our Mongolian uh, theater museum exhibition hall. As uh, you, I mentioned, is that our first Mongolian museum um, in Tanza Arabja in uh, the Mongol province as a market, market, a small market here. As a, if you have uh, more information and please contact me, is a, here is my uh, email address. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. and Joe Avermit. Interesting presentations. And here we are going to present uh, our Mongolian museologist voices here in English first time. I think it's a, uh, it's a, uh, uh, we are going to spread our voices in the, uh, to the international. I'm so glad that doing, uh, joining with you all, uh, doctors of Mongolian museologists, Mongolian museology. So next, uh, next uh, speech is the Miss Zahita Kutar. She is the ex Xcato board member of ICOM Pakistan and chair chair international um, international committee of regional museums. Uh, she is the discussion panelist on on this uh, uh, state of museology conference and uh, original museums in Mongolia. Welcome. Zahita, are you there? Can you hear Zahita? She said, Mr. She double uh, Zoom meeting. She tried to join with us uh, her best. She's not here. Zahita, can you hear? She is attending at Zahita. She tablet with China. Okay. Uh, she will come back. Uh, 
come back after Bomaech, I think so. So the uh, next uh, speech is the, we, uh, uh, we are welcome Dr. Bomata Shtindu, Assistant Professor Chair National Committee, Mongol ICOM. Uh, last Monday, uh, National Committee of Mongolia re-elected uh, Dr. Burma is the chair. Was we uh, have to congratulate to her. Burma, can you hear me? Yes, yes. Okay, welcome you. Please yes. join with us. Uh, uh, greetings, everyone. I, uh, open I your, would like to express open your camera, please. Yes. We would like to see you. Hemra Nech for my chair. Hemra Nech for my chair. Nech for Okay. Okay. Isn't that too good? Welcome. Sure. The old world that have seen business at the state. That's the worst. Pastor Hyder Sandstor Scott, what yet in the business as good as what I was. Again, uh, nice to meet, meet you all of you by Zoom. You know, very nice to see my old friends here, Sally and uh, Dr. Khan, yes, uh, Dr. Hussein. Uh, I uh, I would like to express uh, my appreciation to to the Icon Family Forum, Sir Mohammed Javed, uh, Chair of Mongolia for this forum. My director of today's Mongolian says in Kinaran for organizing this conference, and to our excellent. God's panelists for their wonderful presentations, and also thank you to all participants, participants who joined today. Uh, it was my pl pleasure to hear the research outco uh, outcomes of our panelists. They, of course, the theoretical study of the Mon museum development in Mongolia is highly important. And uh, I would like to maybe uh, to show some slides to for your interest to share with you about our Ico Mongolia. Maybe. Uh, sorry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You see the our number of the our members is increased uh, last three years. Now we have eighty-two members. And you see the our members. Uh, this some um, maybe I will uh, run quickly. You you know the last three years uh, International Museum Day was promoting the sustainable development goal of the United Nations. Uh, now I will show some slides of our Mongolian museums how the posters they greeted for International Museum Day. Maybe this is interesting for you. This is the, we have uh, for kids sheet. This is the Harvard Museum. The kids are drawing this uh, board, with the ancient board. It was, um, foreigners is very interesting, interesting this board. Allah, uh, second is the bio hunger Museum for kids of such uh, sheet. Uh, this is the Chojin Lama Temple Museum, the market of the Chojin Lama Temple Museum. 
uh, this year, this Mongolian military museum organized excursion for museum workers and I commend this for them outside mid uh, trip to city. Uh, we had uh, organized an opening ceremony of the International Museum the Impron uh, with the National Museum of Mongolia and Chojin Lama Temple Museum and the Ministry of Culture of Mongolia. Okay. These kids uh, wore some costumes, special costumes from military museum. Uh, more than 10 museums in Lambata gathered in front of the National Museum of Mongolia and displayed, displayed the uh, publications and uh, works for activities for kids uh, in, in front of the National Museum and uh, many public uh, uh, interested they for them was very interesting to uh, communicate with museum workers. Also, we, uh, our national committee gave uh, awards to five museums of Mongolia. Uh, this is the Mongolian Military Museum, Harharu Museum, Bayungujigayam Province Museum, Harharu Museum, National Museum of Mongolia. Bayungujigayam uh, Province Museum is the yeah, I'm a for Kazakh or Muslim people live. Also, we celebrated our founder members, Mrs. Setama, who was our former chair, and Mrs. Mashetin. And this is Harvard Museum poster. You see the some uh, old uh, writings of Mongolia. They enriched this uh, poster. This is also, I really like it. They organized activity by Hongkong Province Museum. Nice to visit museums among kids. This fine art museum promoted the uh, sustainable development goals. They organized the exhibition uh, from the museum storage. Some uh, artifacts uh, they keep in this, this some, some artifacts from the different countries. You see the flags of the different country in this uh, poster. Now, we, we get the uh, last year, um, three new buildings for museums. This one, uh, new, one be, be new buildings for Umungawam Museum. This is the uh, Southern Mongolia. You see the, this, uh, this museum was renamed Museum of Nature and History, not a local museum. This is the theater museum. They uh, have a performance in the, the museum. Uh, we had this year uh, joined one uh, co community museum joined to the celebration of the National International Museum Day also. Uh, one private museum joined. This is the Mongolian Ethnographic Museum of Gere. Gere is means the, uh, how to say it, Mongolian traditional, traditional living house. The, you, you see that this is the Gere Museum. This is the Zoll Buyers Museum, our um, I come, I come Mongolia secretary. Uh, we also had uh, this interesting event. Uh, the Pine Art Museum, named after Zan Bazar, organized for us uh, evening event, wine and art. They, our members, young members, uh, especially very like to draw it. Uh, this is a uh, fast. You know the 
museums hold an obligation to maintain sustainable development and the change world around us. Uh, and the uh, museums addition, additionally creates cro cross cultural relations and becomes a space for cultural dialogue and for cultural heritage. Uh, thus, we need uh, to heavily focus on collaboration and partnership. So, we have uh, collaboration in Mongolia and trying to have collaboration with international committees and uh, with other museum professionals. One of them is the, you see the Mongolian National Com Commission for UNESCO Committee. We uh, participated in this event for during the COVID. Also, uh, 2022, we, four times we, we was moderator and the panelists for the on Mongolian museums and on the seminar or colloquium on the Mong uh, Mongolian heritage. One of the uh, was uh, uh, invited the state of Sholten from ICON. See. This is some new innovations in National Museum of Mongolia. Uh, ICO Mongolia, one of the, our uh, partners or uh, we have collaboration is you see, you know, the International Virtual Conference on Museums and the ICON Family Forum, Youth Conference and the Informal Talk Show. Uh, 2021, we organized one Mongolian session. Today's session is second one, you, you see. Uh, 2020, we organized the Silk Road Heritage Collection and Connections of uh, Museums. Yes, this is the poster for this uh, session. Also, our, uh, I'm very glad that our three girls today presented. Also, la last year, uh, last year, Ink Narang and Uguntuya, also Mungun Sisi, the young Mongolian Museum staff was presented in the virtual uh, uh, conference on museums. Okay, thank you for attention. And now uh, I just uh, so, say that I sincerely hope that our collaboration with the ICOM committees and the Museum for Fashioners with ICOM Family Forum and the Virtual Museum for, um, Conference uh, <clears throat> will have a direct positive impact to the museum capacity built in Mongolia. And especially uh, we are focusing on the training of the human resources development. This is the one of the uh, one of the key factors of the developing Mongolian museums. And thank you everyone again. Uh, we ICO Mongolia run public page ICO Mongolia. Uh, you see the <coughs> in the page page ICO Mongolia. And uh, we use this tool for disseminating information on the activities of the ICOM, ICOM Mongolia, and best practices of the museums, uh, different museums uh, of the world. And we thank you for the Ms. Mr. Mohammed Javed that he is sharing many important news from the in other different sources to our. Uh, to us also, I'm sharing his information also to ICO Mongolia and our ICO Mongolia members page and chat group also. So uh, thank you again, everyone. I hope to see you also next time. Mm -hmm. That's thank you, so Oma. Stop, stop sharing, Stop sharing.
Bentar, Oke. Okay. Ya. Oke. Okay. That's it is at the at the moment she is the in the meeting with PT PT MS secretary. She is speaking right now. There so uh, now is the time is uh, time for discussion. We can ask um, questions. Uh, questions, please, please free ask the questions for the um, speakers, including Darko Babik, Muktaha, Dosom Jab, Mientas Jamalder, Sale Watson, Yenjo Evermit, Zahida Kotari, for Matash Tindo. Uh, there's the uh, in the comment section. I have seen the one questions to uh, Yenju. I will read that. Wow, so Mongolia has quite a network of museums around the country. There, Yenju, I wonder how many are science museums. Yenju. <laughs> <laughs> Manjor et Zomra. Zomra. He's asking. Uh, what? Please repeat is the uh, question. Uh, uh, I think that he, he is asking you how many is Heinz Museum in Mongolia? No. Can you see this comment section? In the comment section, no. There's the uh, chat. If you if you allow, I can actually uh, ask the question, please. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, uh, Boma. Yes. Can you uh, stop sharing your screen? A desktop. I think your hand are put. Could you, could you stop, please? So, because the. Uh, uh, you. Yes, that's please. Please carry on. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, good to hear you, uh, uh, everybody. And. Uh, uh, I think Yanji did mention that uh, there were 48 museums and uh, I was very pleased to hear that this all began in the 1920s. Uh, but I was wondering, uh, because I consider museums a very good source of uh, non-formal education in every respect. So I was uh, wondering how many out of those 48 are actually the science museums. Thank you. Yes, Sandeep. Uh -huh. Can anyone can can anyone answer Dr. Sumro's uh, question? While oh, I was going to I was going to say, I find stop me stop me for jumping in, but um, when you get into the regions, museums can be everything. You know, they can have a science aspect, a cultural history. You know, like the as you leave the city, the museums become one museum, not different disciplines. Do you think I'm right? Meanders? Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah. Sorry. Uh, please, Poma. Uh, uh, this uh, two or three years ago was opened at a small museum. I think this, uh, this is the scientific museum in the Institute Technical University of Mongolia. Because mm -hmm. also we have some community or how to say it, museums nearby, nearby some special organizations. For example, the uh, connection to connection. Connection. Community. Connection. Community. Some Connection organization, transport organization. Uh, I think this the museum uh, it 
technical Mongolian technical scientific universities the science museum special also the other mentors no go to yes yeah so so uh uh, my museum now of uh, uh, name it a uh, natural history museum. So we are planning to change uh, a position of uh, of natural history museum change into natural science museum. So we are preparing a new uh, concept uh, for the uh, new national uh, natural science museum, and we are preparing. We are now working for the changing and uh, uh, natural science museum. It's a begin. Uh, 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 we are planning. It uh, will realize it uh, almost two thousand twenty seven year, uh, two thousand twenty seven. So uh, in Mongolia, we have not specially type of science museum. It just we have historical and uh, uh, relig uh, religions museum, two museums, as you know, Bokka Museum and Churchill Temple Museum, and historical museum, uh, Mongolian National History Museum, and also Chinggis Khan National Museum. And... Uh, a uh, theatrical museum uh, and um, uh, art museum, uh, uh, yes, art museums. And um, where, may I ask, does the um, dinosaur museum, what is its classification? Is it history or science or environment? So, uh, uh, dinosaur museums is uh, a natural history museum. Uh -huh. Dinosaur museum. Yes. Uh, some, some years uh, uh, dinosaur uh, museum was separate museum. Now we yes. uh, com combine it with the natural history museum. What? What? Combine it with museum. Actually, <laughs> actually, the dinosaurs, uh, you know, that's also very much part of uh, all the uh, natural history and understanding natural history is quite a science. I just want to mention here, uh, using this opportunity, uh, as I mentioned in the chat, uh, I was part of the team evaluating the last, uh, you know, uh, science and technology plan of Mongolia together with the UNESCO. And uh, mm -hmm. we worked with the Dr. Arvind Bayar from the Department of Science and Technology. And there we recommended to have some uh, science centers, interactive science centers, where the communities, the general public, okay. as well as uh, students no. can be, uh, you know, educated uh, non-formally. I think uh, linking with the, these museums and ICOM with the, those, Science centers interactive would be uh, wonderful. So may I yes, suggest? Uh, uh, yes, yeah. Mark, Mark, can you discuss um, with the uh, discuss with the uh, the science and technology department, Dr. Arvind Bayar, particularly uh, because he was the team leader to uh, bring these two together. Uh, so education not about only particular scientific subject but you see nowadays you cannot really separate in every art there is a lot of science and uh, all sciences are quite an art so uh, you know let's bring them together uh, the uh, other point that i wanted to uh, make was really appreciate uh, that uh, this development uh, and my colleague, uh, Mohammed Javed Akhtar, has been uh, supporting this. So he has been actually updating me, but I never got a chance to participate. So this is wonderful that I have uh, joined this. And uh, uh, I am also uh, vice president of the Belt and Road International Science Education Consortium. And there we have a virtual science center. 
uh, and if any of the Mongolian museums has a virtual tour of the museum, we would very much appreciate uh, that to be linked uh, with that uh, virtual uh, science uh, center because these are all part of the education as a whole. And uh, after Javed can give you, or I can put my email in the chat if uh, you need any further information. Thank you very much. Thank you. Can you write down your email uh, in chat? I think it's the virtual technology of museums in Mongolia, National, History, National Museum of Mongolia, even Chinggisan National Museum. I think is they they can change uh, emails and uh, drops each others. I guess so. May, may I uh, say some pages? Mm -hmm. Please, sure. Just last year, last year. Uh, Buma, Buma, no. let me let me introduce Dr. Manzur uh, Hussain Tumro. Okay. He, uh, he was. Uh, uh, the chairman of Pakistan Science Foundation, and there are science museums comes under that Pakistan Science Foundation, particularly Natural History Museum, you see. So Pakistan Natural History Museum is a very much part of Pakistan Science Foundation. And uh, he has been uh, uh, quite a good role in uh, uh, developing that museum and also uh, projecting it to the several at several forums. So uh, I'm, uh, now, nowadays he is uh, the chairman of Eco Science Foundation. So Eco Countries Science Foundation. So uh, similarly, he is uh, the president and member of many uh, consortiums and uh, uh, committees, international committees in uh, South uh, Asia, Central Asia and East Asia and uh, also in uh, um, other countries too. So uh, he is a very valuable person. And uh, I believe his suggestion is very nice if that uh, ICOM uh, Mongolia could, uh, uh, you see, uh, think of putting these uh, uh, museums, science museums, particularly they, they have uh, the two virtual tours and all these things as uh, he is suggesting to uh, you. So that, that will be very nice for, for the proposal. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Toma? Thank you for information. And we, we are all very happy to have Dr. Mansur. He, uh, I, as I understood, he was working also for, with our Mongolian uh, Mongolian UNESCO and he is very uh, experienced. Thank you that he is joining us today. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for all. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Who are participated in uh, uh, conference instead of Mongola Museology. I hope you all heard about Mongolian museology development in uh, development level in, in in by international language. I'm so glad for that. Thank you for the Mohammed Javed. Thank you for the Darko Papik, even all speakers, including Pumas Ichcha. So, mm -hmm. uh, do you have the, any questions? If not, it's the time to short photo. Could, yeah. yeah, but uh, I don't have a question, but I have a, a little uh, to say about the speakers, uh, to, to appreciate the speakers and keynote speeches, speaker, and uh, especially efforts made by Boma and you. So you are the chair of IVCOM, International Virtual Committee, uh, and the virtual uh, conference on museums in uh, Mongolia. So there's a lot of efforts behind this uh, conference you have put in and, and I, I quite appreciate on behalf of ICOM Pakistan and also ICOM Family Forum. So uh, you all know that ICOM Family Forum is, uh, is, is a uh, 
activity of ICOM Pakistan. You see, so uh, so we uh, definitely we all uh, think that we should uh, bring the many countries together uh, on this forum, and so that we can collaboratively do a larger things uh, in the world. So it's uh, I'm I'm very much obliged, and thank you very much to the Darko. Uh, uh, the keynote speaker and uh, Boma, the end note speaker, and the speakers, the four uh, uh, learned speakers. So uh, I'm sorry I cannot take them because uh, uh, these names are, uh, uh, I have a difficulty in pronouncing, pronouncing this Mongolian uh, names, but uh, I only know Boma and Sandeep. So, uh, and that's all. <laughs> Thank you very much indeed. Um, I appreciate it. Okay. Okay. It's the, it's the time to open your camera to shoot a photo. Uh, if you have the who who has um, skill to shoot screen, just to shoot that because I use the I can use only my phone. <laughs> Пиганцлоо if I have the photograph, so I will be at, uh, in, in a yeah, little while I will post this on Facebook, you see. So where are you, Muhammad? Open yeah. your camera. Wait, you know, you know, she moves it, she moves it to wild Muhammad is hiding. Yes, sir, Sunday, she moves it to a big dog. Such a thing, 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 such Nara, I'm sorry once more again. So because we are talking with Poma during uh, uh, the photo, can you uh, once more again to take photo? Screenshot. 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 Ah, here's my Usually you do in the laptop rather than with the. Nara, so you got touched by the baby. Nika, so that book there is smile. Yeah. Okay, smile. One, two, three. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thank you. I didn't I to. I didn't to make you. screenshot. I I I don't. I, I can't. Okay, Nara. Is okay? Yeah, well, sir, thank you for connecting. Oh, you oh, sir, so nice of you. Uh, I'm really happy to see you here. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is, it's, it is a uh, quite memorable, memorable time, memorable time we have uh, uh, in Pakistan Science Foundation with you and your leadership definitely fruitful. So to, to today you are ripening that fruit. Thank you. You are Thank you. I'm, I'm actually extremely yes. pleased that uh, uh, this uh, regional uh, interaction of museums is continuing and uh, that you are uh, active part of it, uh, Javed. So wonderful. wonderful. Mm -hmm. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you, you all very much and bye-bye. Uh, uh, I yeah. hope okay. to join you again. Mm. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank also, you very uh, much. I also want to mention that Sally was uh, in Mongolia, I think, for three years. Yes, yes, I so think. Uh, do not have she, your computer. She, she knows yeah. uh, Mongolia very well. <laughs> you can also ask. <laughs> okay.
Awesome. Thank I, you. I want I need to come again to update my knowledge and say mm -hmm. my phrase. Okay. Thank you. Perhaps one day Thank we can you. have a meeting in person. Yeah. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.